I, Princess Salma, daughter of King Jaden and Priestess Bera, and heir to the throne of Kryta, call upon all good Krytons to rise up against the villainy of the White Mantle. For too long have they ruled us with campaigns of secrecy and terror, and it shames me to say we've let them do it. They derive their power from dark magic, sacrificing countless Crichton lives, never sating the foul appetites of their demonic masters. But their time is at an end. The unseen demons lie decimated while the White Mantle Council itself is shattered. Today the Shining Blade strikes at the Sword of Vengeance, ready to dismember the White Mantle until nothing is left. Stand with us and we will see freedom and justice reign once more in Kryta. It is time to expose the charlatans who usurped the Crichton throne for what they are, cultists, murderers and demon worshippers. The White Mantle priests do not lie when they speak of devotion to powerful unseen beings, but these slippery creatures are not gods, they are demons. White Mantle rituals have always worn the cloak of secrecy, and now we know why. Rituals intended to select chosen individuals for special duties within the White Mantle were an unforgivable lie, and buying into that lie were our children, our brothers and sisters, our mothers and fathers, poor naive souls marching deep into the Maguma jungle where they would witness firsthand the evil of the unseen demons. These innocents were murdered and given in cold sacrifice to the so-called gods of the White Mantle. They derive all power from this foul wellspring of dark magic. For too long this story is festered, hidden at the heart of the jungle and lost in the death cries of the helpless. Fortunately for Kryta, some blessed few survivors have escaped to tell the tale. It is a tale of evil, a tale of betrayal. It is an ugly truth that all of us must now face. Hi guys and welcome to another video. There are currently a lot of fireworks going on outside my window so I'm sorry if you can hear them in the video or if you can hear them hopefully you'll enjoy them. They are, they've been going on for so long and in the end I was just like look I've got to film anyway so, uh, so yeah hopefully you can't hear them you probably won't be able to anyway but hi guys hope you're having a good day. Uh, welcome to another video let's continue on. So uh, we're here in Kaineng Center because we're going to do the next uh, MOX quest which would be I think it's Nox? No it's Pox deactivating Pox. Okay, so uh, another one of these golems, if you remember, they're, they're trying to assassinate the Emperor. Um, I know what you're probably thinking, oh, wooden potatoes, why aren't you on Tom Bluewood? Well, uh, the truth is, I just, I haven't sorted out Tom Bluewood, and it's quite a hard mission anyway, so I figured, you know what, we'll just do it with Peter, since I, I can't be bothered to, because then I'd have to do it off screen, and yeah, it's a bit late anyway. So, um, so yeah, we'll speak to this guy here, Guardsman Makuyuro. Oh, man. Jesus, why are Cantha and Alona like this? All of the names are so annoying. Well, I actually spoke to this guy ages ago, you might remember, and I was like, oh yeah, he'll be in the story way later. Uh, that isn't, uh, th th what I'm talking about there isn't actually the quest I was talking about with with, th with this specific quest. It'll be even later we'll speak to him again, but um, yeah. So, uh, the Jade Brotherhood is up to something, apparently. Will he believe us? When is the Jade Brotherhood not up to something? Well, yeah, very true. Their war with the Amfa has spilled into every street corner lately. I spent more time cleaning up the bloody remains of their battles than anything else. What sort of trouble are they up to now? Alright, good, so at least he believes us. They have a weapon. I need to infiltrate their ranks and disarm it. Okay. We have heard rumours of some sort of weapon purchased from an outside source. Our own spies use spare Jade Brotherhood clothes collected from corpses after their battles to get on the inside. Oh, cool. So can we use some of these Jade Brotherhood outfits to sneak into the headquarters? Why, of course. Yeah, we certainly have enough outfits to spare, he says. We must mop up corpses from the battles every day. Must keep the streets clean, you know. Take as many as you need. Anything to help disrupt this ramp rampant gang activity. I love this, this dialogue here. It's like, take as many as you need. It's like they're scared to say you can have eight because there's a chance the player won't be in a party of eight. Like anyone's going to bother soloing this, but whatever. Be careful, though. Why Jump Bazaar is a war zone. While you wear these outfits, the Amphal will attack you on site. Good luck. You're awf awfully brave to walk into the middle of that mess. Okay, I'm ready to infiltrate the Jade Brotherhood. I love this. Because we get to come back and, and see Cantha a bit. It just occurred to me, actually, now that I've just got it, I hadn't thought about this. We haven't been to Cantha for ages. We really haven't. That's another reason why I decided not to do Tom here, because we're going to be in an outfit anyway. It's a pretty cool mission, isn't it, actually? You get your... Everyone ends up looking like Jade Brotherhood. Um, so a knight says to us, Reinforcements, thank goodness. Find an Amphar skull and crack it. The only broken skulls around here will be yours. Attack... Oh, shit. 
the, the Amthara here. Alright, brilliant. So yeah, we get to sort of come back and see a little bit of this story with these two gangs here. Um, this is uh, sort of expanded on even more in another chapter of um, Guild Wars Beyond, the, the one that's coming out at the moment, Winds of Change. Uh, so, I mean, do enjoy it if you guys were big fans of, of, of factions. Honest to God, I don't know whether it's just because I was never that favourable about it with my commentary and stuff during the Let's Play, but I, I don't think I've ever seen anyone say that Canther is their favourite. I wouldn't blame you if it wasn't your favourite, but if, if you are enjoying this, um, I do... Oh, look, check it out. It is eight years down the line, so you could say that this is all broken now over those years. Don't forget all the earthquakes from Eye of the North and so forth. Just ran into a spike trap. Brilliant. But, uh, but yeah, so uh, if you are enjoying it, it won't be too long, I guess, after the Roaring Crater and after Hot Hearts of the North. We'll be doing a lot more in, here in Canther. I don't actually have any plans to come back here um, very soon until then. So, so yeah. Jesus, can you not hear those fireworks? It's almost like the ice cream van. Who hasn't been, <laughs> been around for a while, what must I say? These streets belong to the Jade Brotherhood. Trespassers will be left at the bottom of Kaineng Bay. Kaineng Bay? Is that like the only time we ever hear of the, the, the water around here being mentioned as Kaineng Bay? Very interesting. Alright, we'll continue on. One thing that I do think is a little bit stupid is they obviously divide, div uh, design this quest to sort of be an infiltration thing. Um, and then they, but they also simultaneously gave and sort of encouraged players to use MOX as a hero who can't wear, like, races, heroes that aren't of your, of the human race won't wear disguises like this. Like, if you remember in Gandara and Nightfall, how they couldn't wear the Corsair outfits, sorry, the Corn and Troop outfits, or the Corn, indeed, the Corsair outfits back in uh, Istan, all these sort of missions like this, it just doesn't work. At least in, uh, Gandara they had all that quest line to do with if you had Zed Shadow with you he'd have his own sort of story as to why he wasn't in in, in outfit which was pretty cool but usually they just ignore it like this more Amphar sewer rats coming from the west look at all these uh, these Jade Brotherhood here it's brilliant I really do like this quest I mean, it's not much of an... I mean, feel free to read these guys. There's so many text boxes here, I won't be able to. But, uh, I mean, it's, it's supposed to be like an infiltration quest. But, uh, I mean, I actually um, said a long time ago in Prophecies, uh, and I, I, I remember myself saying this as well recently, that I said when we were doing... Um, I think it was Riverside Province that we were doing? Uh, when we when we just got back to Cryo, I said that that mission was the big, the closest thing you'll ever get to a stealth mission in Guild Wars. And it's true. I still stand by that. By that. I really, really do. The, I mean, this is supposed to be a kind of like a stealth mission, but the, the gameplay this still does boil down to, hey, let's just kick everything's ass. At least with that mission, unless you're going for the bonus, which admittedly everyone really will be going for, um, it, it can encourage you to actually play stealthily and avoid groups and stuff, which is really cool. And that's the only time you really, really see it in Guild Wars. It's a good, this is a cool quest anyway, though, don't, don't get me wrong. Defend the headquarters and fire everywhere. So, uh, as you may remember, or may not remember, I loved this when, they, when ArenaNet introduced this. Uh, in Factions, there was a throwaway quest, basically, where you took out the leader of the Jade Brotherhood. Quick rundown of the Jade Brotherhood and Amphar. Basically, these are two huge gangs in Kynang Center. Um, and essentially, they're uh, kind of Im immune to the Emperor and that they, they can't sort of be gotten rid of by, due to various things that are going on in Canther. Um, but basically, they just run rampant in the streets and they hate each other, basically. The, the, the fear is that, I think, I think this was the law anyway, that the fear was if one group was taken out, um, then the other group could rise to, to new heights and uh, and basically challenge the Empire itself. So uh, that's basically the theory there. So the, em the, the Emperor actually, through illegitimate means, actually ends up sort of funding both of these two groups to keep them fine. Anyway, there was a lot of really cool lore about it. Thank you, Leanne, Dragon Petal. Um, there was a lot of really cool lore written, basically, about these gangs, but they weren't really... In uh, brought into the main storyline that much they were just sort of as an aside while we were here in in the city uh, but yeah one quest a throwaway quest established this little island here as being the jade brotherhood headquarters and uh, it was one of those things you know like the many things that i just thought huh oh well this probably won't ever have any significance or be mentioned again and yet you know just before they started doing war in cryo they, re they released this quest chain and acknowledged that this indeed was the jade brotherhood stronghold and they do that more in the winds of change as well so it's pretty cool because that's got a lot of the gangs that's really good for the gangs anyway so let's continue on no problem leanne i feel a bit bad there's been a lot of dialogue some of the dialogue is fairly interesting here if you've, if you've seen it feel free to pause as i always say if i'm not going to read it out but um it's quite cool. I like I like the mission that at least you get to play alongside a lot of the uh, bosses, the Jade Brotherhood that you might have uh, not liked before. I mean, they're annoying to fight. But I, I would say the Amphar are more annoying to fight against, really, because they get like flashing blades and stuff. If you're a physical guy, oh. this is why the city was such a nightmare 
for like assassins. Like when I started playing uh, factions, I played an assassin character, and arena net just shat all over them. They introduced a new melee class, and then proceeded to add the Amphar in the city that block basically everything you do against them because of flashing blades. Actually, was, was that the effect of flashing blades when the game, game came out? I think it was. And then they, even worse, they added, of course, uh, the uh, afflicted with afflicted soul explosion. So you had these squishy melee guys that would also have things exploding in their faces constantly, which is just absolutely hilarious for the amount of assassins. Like me, I'll, I'll hold my hands up, who died constantly there at the release of factions. I was actually talking about that in the dungeon run. Quite weird I'd go back to the topic here. But yeah, okay. So, uh, I think we're coming up near the end here. Um, of this first little section of the quest anyway. It's quite a long little mini mission, I suppose, really. One thing I do find interesting. Actually, let's read this out. So, the stench of the sewers clings to you, Lou. I shall wash it, wash it clean with your blood. The last thing you'll see in this life will be my knives. Oh, God. Let's get over there. Come on. So, yeah, I, I think there are a lot of references, actually. I vaguely remember uh, to, like, fighting games maybe here. I'm not 100% sure. The uh, generic assassin says, The Jade Brotherhood do not honour the rules of a duel. Kill them. Oh, is that because we came and interfered? I don't think it is. I think they fight anyway. Oh, wait, do they fight anyway? Oh, my God. I think they might just duke it out if you just stand behind. That's really interesting. I never realised that before. I never really read that dialogue before, but maybe they do. Huh. I may have to do this again some other time. I'll check the wiki and like edit in to see uh, to let you guys know if you can literally just sit back and watch. That'd be kind of cool. But yeah, one, one thing I wonder is why they chose when designing this quest for the Jade Brotherhood to be the ones that sort of bought the go golem. I suppose it's simply due to the down to the fact that the Amphar are just poor bastards, really, just literally sewer rats. While the Amphar, while the Jade Brotherhood are sort of more, uh, they're more the mafia gang, I suppose. While the Amphar are just petty thugs and, and very petty criminals. Uh, what are we doing now? They've died. Are we just continuing along? Uh, locate Pox in Waijun Bazaar and deactivate him. Wing three blade. He's got a cool elite that you can't get in this in this mission actually. Oh yeah, you can. I think he fights you later. There's only room for one gang in Kanthe if you say so. All oh, right, we're just coming up here, I believe. Got a little bit lost there for a moment, guys. Do excuse me. All right, they saluted us. Yes, 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 yes. Okay, so here we go. Right, so we're going to be walking along here. Uh, most wanted Amphar plaques. I've never actually read these before. We can check these out in a second. Non-humans in the Brotherhood. We take anyone these days, it seems. Oh, I guess they're... Are, are they referring to Vec or MOX? Who knows? Who knows? I like the idea of Asura and Norn and stuff. Have I mentioned this before in the Let's Play? In regions like this as well. I find it so weird to imagine. Like, you know when we were playing as Togo and we saw all that stuff kicking off with the Tengu and we were down here at Minister Wana's estate in this mountain range? I love the idea. It seems so bizarre but so fitting of Norn being around in these mountains. Isn't that a cool thought? Really interesting. I also like to think of, you know, the heart, the sort of hole to the other side of the world we saw many, 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 many miles north uh, at the very height of where we could get to in the entire game. I love the idea of one of those being in the mountain, the other end of it being in like the mountain range to the south of, of, of Canther as well, just because that's the most northerly and the most southerly sort of sections. But then again, I guess that would kind of suck because that would mean that there'd be very little else set to the south here. So, you know, I don't like the idea of limiting how big Tyria could really be. Anyway, sorry. Right. Let's uh, read these plaques. I thought I was a little bit... Yeah, I did. I just got turned around, didn't I? Right, so what have we got? Let's read... I want to read from the first... Yeah, let's read from the first one first. Okay, so... Most Wanted Amphar number one. Most Wanted Amphar number one. Lou of the Knives. Oh, so I wonder if these are all going to be people we've met. Wanted for the cold-blooded murder of 27 members of the Jade Brotherhood, including the revered Lord Jeheni Yaoman of the First Jade Fist. Okay. Yeah, I'm going to make very little attempt to actually read these out properly. Actual Canton language as well. Check it out. Pretty cool. I love it. That, I guess that's how we can we can translate it, I suppose. Uh, what else have we got? We've got... Oh, are they always the same script? Let's take a look. Bottom right-hand image there is... Oh, sadly, the same as the bottom right-hand image there. Oh, no, no, they are different. Because, look, the name here has got... Oh, no, 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 they are the same. Right, sorry, sorry, sorry. Let's continue on. Uh, Most Wanted Amphar 2. Chan of the Dragon's Blood. Distant, disowned relative to the Emperor. Wow. Thrown out of Canther for illegal dealings with Luxon smugglers. Chan will do anything whatsoever to get rid of, to get what he wants. Rumoured to be the keeper of the Amphar coffers. Hmm, okay. Uh, number 3. Uh, Mind Sang the Sadistic. Long lost to madness, this creature is more beast than man. Because don't forget this, obviously the, the Amphar were openly embracing the plague and corrupting themselves. Remember all that stuff with the Chalice of Corruption? Oh man, I wish we still had that plague effect. That was so cool, I love that. 
Remember that in the in the factions let's play? Anyway, right, so, I'm um, sorry. Gave his own family over to creatures of the Great Plague to prove his worth to the Amphar. Believed to be the head torturer for the Amphar, okay? Because the Amphar really are nasty pieces of work. I, I, these guys are, the Jade Brotherhood are a bit more underhanded, but I think I actually prefer them. Uh, and number four, of course, is Mina Shatterstorm. Believed to be responsible for the death of an entire Brotherhood recruiting class. No known information. Of course, you wouldn't know anything about the Mesmer. They're too mysterious and awesome, and they keep things from whoa here we go so his his pox pox this is one of the harder fights definitely my lord the amfa have swarmed the headquarters they surround us oh dear i had hoped to save our new weapon for our ultimate attack on the amfa headquarters clearly we cannot wait so they actually bought this thing to attack the amfa i think this guy is the coolest looking golem as well activate the golem he says are you sure that's a good idea guys all systems normal pox active Okay, <laughs> do you guys like my robot voice? POX, destroy the Amphar, protect our headquarters. Will he listen to the directive? Invalid directive, command failed. Oh dear, who saw this coming? Disguise, you're disguised as a member of the Jade Brotherhood. The column has gone haywire, run for it. Yes, okay, so he uses reactor blast. If he gets this off, watch our, watch our health. Ready? With Ah, oh, what, it didn't do that much damage. Oh, it's because we got a soul twister. Yeah, I feel a bit bad for having such OP builds. I keep having people commenting and saying, oh, you're making this stuff look too easy. I do feel a little bit bad because, like, with, specifically with bosses like this, look, look, this thing does 200, I'm pointing at the screen here, does 200 damage and causes knockdown and burning on everyone. It, it, it's a really powerful skill, and there are a lot of huge explosive abilities like this, but I, I just never really demonstrate them because we're using soul twisters and stuff, and just such overpowered builds that make everything super easy. In any case, sorry, did I, uh, did I miss some dialogue here? Um, and fast spies come to destroy our golem. Get them. Wait. Oh, all right. So we're not actually um, disguised any longer. We've uh, shed our clothes because clearly they were restricting our ability to fight effectively. And now we have to because we've got all this. You see this this ability here? Bloodstone Slash. Very interesting, the fact that it would be sort of a bloodstone ability and stuff like this. Um, Generally, I mean, uh, if you're using a soul twister, I can't, here, what does Slash do? It just steals 75 health. I wonder why there is bloodstone technology going on in the Golems. It, it, does that mean somehow that the, the Asura are manipulating magic from the gods? See, the bloodstones, they're, they're such a, a mess in lore. They really are. They're, they're so, and I don't know whether I, I usually like it when um, sort of the lore isn't described in minute detail, so there's a bit of mystery going on there. But the bloodstones just seem sloppy and messy, and I think we need more information on them to really understand what's going on. Because they're, they're made out to be the god, the, the magic that was given to the races of Tyria, bear in mind we don't know what races they are, by the gods, was then later sort of channeled away into the bloodstones so that no, no one being could have access to all magic at once. So, if the Asura have been making golems that are using magic of the bloodstones, what does that, what does that mean? What does that mean? I mean, and, and you'll know that the bloodstones sort of have all these weird sort of effects when you're around them, sort of where things die or resurrection takes twice as long and all these weird things. Just the magic is very weird. Have we got an invisibility bug again? This keeps coming up on my client l lately. Very weird. It's good for screenshots. It's really good for screenshots, but it's so hard to know how to activate it. Is there anything else we can speak to before concluding this? I feel like I may have missed a couple of things in this little mini mission, but never mind. So POX. POX appears fully deactivated. Hooray! You reach out and open up his control panel. Inside lies the go golem's power crystal. It emits a strange buzzing sound and vibrates erratically, almost as if something is trying to escape. This is the object Zin requires. You need only reach out and take it. And yes, that is repeat dialogue we heard before. So there we go. That's deactivating POX done. Uh, we just need one more golem to deactivate. But of course, that won't be next video because we just did a whole video outside of Krita. And, uh, and yeah, so um, next video... Oh, I, I want to go back to the Shining Blade camp. I've had time to... The, the, it, you know, we picked up the overarching quest. Um, it turns out, and I had my suspicions that this might happen. But um, you know how I said the overarching quest uh, causes you to skip a lot of stuff in the Warring Kryter? I thought it was generally because it would just encourage players to skip past content they could still otherwise see. However, it turns out that accepting that overarching quest also skips out um, at least one dialogue encounter that I was expecting to see last video. So uh, next video, we'll be seeing that by using one of the other characters I don't know who so um that will be coming next video and more stuff actually in Kryta. i hope you guys like the video and i will see you next time see you later everybody and the fireworks have stopped
just as I finish filming. What are the odds of that? 